Phone number ending in 9325. What item are you here for? Could you please unmute yourself and let me know? Phone number ending in 9325. What item are you here for? Hello. Uh, yes, what item are you here for? Oh, your name? Uh, I'm uh, entering the commission, uh, planning commission meeting. Yes, what item are you here for in your name, please? Um, my name is Benny Chen. I can't remember the item number. It's for the oh. um, uh, okay. item, uh, well, the planning sure. commission, the CDP number is 624979, Kornberg. Okay. Yeah, Benny, I got your information. That's item number two, and I will go ahead and place you into the waiting, ro waiting room until that item is ready, okay? I just stay here, and I, I don't know. Do I get it on the video, or is that difficult? You you can watch it on YouTube. Okay, I'll go to YouTube. How do I? Yes, I'm going to place you in the waiting room, okay? Yeah, I'll wait here. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay, good morning, and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of November 19th, 2020. Per Executive Order 29-20, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act, this meeting will be conducted entirely by teleconferencing. Per the Brown Act, we have posted notice of the meeting agenda 72 hours in advance. Uh, this meeting is being broadcasted on YouTube and you can go to the city's website to find the link. Anyone who would like to speak at our meeting today on any item must do so by calling in by phone. Instructions are posted on the city's website. When you call in, you will be placed in an electronic waiting room until you are prompted to speak. If you're a speaker, a couple of things to know and remember. When it's your turn, please turn off your sound on your computer and on your TV set so that we don't have to hear the background noise. When you enter the waiting room, please stay muted until it's your turn to speak. And I would ask the planning commissioners to do the same thing. Uh, most important, when your item comes up and you're getting ready to speak, Listen for your prompt from your phone, not your computer webcast. And the reason is that there's sometimes a 20 to 30 second time delay on the webcast from the actual meeting. Your phone will be live time. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and take a roll call. As I call your name, please indicate if you're present. Uh, Commissioner Austin. Present. Commissioner Boomhauer. Present. Commissioner Granowitz. Present. Commissioner Moden. Present. Commissioner Otsuchi. Present. Vice Chairman Whalen. Present. And Chairman Hoffman is present. Uh, the, the staff members online with us today are Tim Daly from Development Services, Brian Schoenfish from the Planning Department, Tony Khalil, City Engineer, and our Deputy City Attorney, Corinne Neufer. So with that, I would now like to go ahead and start our agenda. And we're going to start with public comment for any non-agenda items. And do we have any speakers uh, for non-agenda items? Commissioner, or Chairman Hoppen, no, we do not have any speakers. Okay. Then we'll move on to requests for items to be continued or withdrawn. And I understand that item number one there is a request for continuance. Um, and what I would like to do before we take that vote is open it up to anybody who has called in to, who wants to speak on item number one. And I will take that as we have no uh, speakers for item number one. So with that, um, I will take a motion to continue. Please um, continue. I'll make that motion. Second. Excuse me, um, planning commissioners, do you have a date certain that you want to continue it to? Uh, I'd like to ask staff, if, staff, do you have a date that you're proposing? Yes, uh, I provided a memo to the planning commissioners and would like to request the, the date of December the 17th for the planning commission hearing on this item. All right, then I will change my motion that we will, uh, I'll move to move, uh, this item to December 17th. Uh, excuse okay. me, um, out, um, outside uh, visitor, I, I don't have the number of which item, what item one number one is. 
Okay, that is the Arroyo Sorrento tentative map. I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay, my mistake. I didn't know. I went to 624979 Kornberg agenda okay. item. I don't know which one that is. Uh, that's next, so we'll get to that one. Sorry. And it's okay, thank you much. Uh, thank you, and I apologize. I will start naming those items when I we make these motions. So we have a motion and a second to continue this item to December 17th. And let's go ahead and take a vote. Uh, Commissioner Austin? Aye. Commissioner Boomhauer? Aye. Commissioner Granowitz? Aye. Commissioner Moden? Aye. Commissioner Otsuchi? Aye. Vice Chairman Whalen? Aye. And Chairman Hoffman is an aye. So that item is continued and we'll move on to the any director's reports. Yeah, actually I do have an item for development service department. I'd like to go ahead and congratulate uh, Gary Geiler is our new assistant director replacing Greg Hopkins who recently retired. Gary has been uh, with the department for quite a long time as a uh, planner and then as a deputy director and is now gonna be our uh, assistant director and he became effective on uh, November the 2nd. So uh, congratulations uh, to Gary, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yes, good morning. A um, Couple of items, um, last week was a big week for us at city council, as you probably heard on Monday, both the Complete Communities Housing Solutions Program and the Complete Communities Mobility Choices Program were adopted by the city council. And then on Tuesday, the Kearney Mesa Community Plan Update was unanimously approved by the city council. And that one is a big one because it, it marks a milestone for us because the Kearney Mesa Community Plan Update is the 16th Community Plan Update to be completed since 2014. And it, uh, it added an additional 21, approximately 21,000 additional units of housing capacity. And uh, taken in total, these 16 community plan updates now reach the 100,000 unit mark as far as we've now added since 2014, 100,000 new additional housing units of cap capacity across the city through these community plan updates. So that is a, quite a milestone for us. Thank you. That's great. Thank you for that report. Uh, let's go to commission comment. And what I'll ask is just uh, raise your hand if you'd like to make a comment. Uh, Commissioner Austin. Yeah, real quickly, one, just comment that great choice with Gary. He's a wonderful person to work with, very positive attitude and very knowledgeable. So that was great. But the other thing is just um, want to make sure I understand when those items that were passed become effective. Uh, sure. Um, so there is there will be a second reading for those ordinances, um, which will uh, we're anticipating to take place um, uh, by around des December 8th. And that's not confirmed yet, but um, I'll let you know once that's confirmed. And then once that happens, then they have to be signed by the mayor. Um, and then there will be a 30 day uh, period uh, after that, in which they will, be, they will become effective after 30 days. So we're looking at probably mid -gen early to mid January right now. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, any other commission comments? Uh, Vice Chair Whalen. Thank you. Uh, a couple things, they're stormwater driven. So uh, for Mr. Khalil, I think you're on top of some of this, but I wanted to make sure the commission was aware that the water board is now adding biological stream health to the list of permitting criteria that you have to meet a certain standard of biological uh, quality and um, City staff, I think, participated with an, uh, another uh, couple of the co-permittees to ask the water board for more time how to do this. And I'd like to get a, a report from staff next meeting on where we stand on that. There, uh, and also on alternative compliance, we have a new mayor. I think there'll be a push to have the, the program finished. I'd like to hear if, if Tony knows now, well, where does that stand? We should be hearing of an EIR. And then uh, the last thing is the government giveth, the government taketh away. 
um, ephemeral stream channels are no longer jurisdictional under the Army Corps of Engineers. In response, the Water Board has expanded their jurisdiction now to cover anything that may have an, as little as an inch of flow over a period of time. And now our, we'll call it assuming jurisdiction. So I don't even know what to say other than to bring it to people's attention right now. And we're gonna see what we can do to make it possible to survive it. Uh, good morning. Vice Chairman Whalen, everyone else. Uh, we hired a senior engineer in the stormwater section. Sean Torres started on Monday, November 16th. He will be uh, overseeing the stormwater section. Um, I will go over these uh, three issues, the biological, the alternative, and the water streams uh, with him, and we'll get back to you. Uh, he's just getting his feet wet into the uh, so to speak. Day to day. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we will get back with you on, on these issues. Uh, I would give, I'd like to give him some time just to catch up. We're doing a little reorg. Um, uh, maybe we'll be repositioning a couple of uh, additional staff to his section for the storm order. So uh, uh, we'll get back with you on this. So to put this in more layman's terms uh, to my fellow commissioners, if we're having a biological standard of water quality imposed on us, I can't think of a better way to address it by doing alternative compliance, meaning take the drainage from North Park at the top of the canyons that go into Mission Valley, treat it there and meet the objective. So, you know, there already was an impetus to get this alternative compliance underway. Now there really is. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other commission comments? Okay, then we'll move right into our first discussion item. This is item two, Kornberg CDP. Uh, and staff, if you have a report. So we'll bring up the uh, PowerPoint. Give one second. Great, thank you, Sabrina. Item two uh, is an appeal of the hearing officer's decision to approve a coastal development permit to demolish an existing single dwelling unit and construct a new single family dwelling unit with companion unit in La Jolla. The issue before you today is the project appeal of the hearing officer decision on August the 19th, 2020 to approve the development permit to mitigate declaration and mitigated monitoring group reporting program that was associated with this project. The 0.3 acre project site is located at 2605 Ellen Town Road in the RS14 residential zone, the coastal appealable overlay zone, coastal height limitation overlay zone, the first public roadway, residential tandem parking area overlay zone, parking impact overlay zone, and transit priority areas overlay zones within La Jolla Community Plan and local coastal program land use plan. The project site's land use designation is very low residential with zero to five dwelling units per acre pursuant to the community plan. Specifically, this application for a proposed coastal developer will be for the demolition of an existing single dwelling unit and the construction of a new single story, single dwelling unit with attached garage and a companion unit. On August 19, 2020, the hearing officer considered the project and adopted the project's mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring reporting program and approved the coastal development permit. On August 26, 2020, Mary E. DeJong filed an appeal of the project citing the grounds for appeal due to factual error and new information. A second appeal was filed on September, 2, or September 1, 2020 by Beth and Marshall Horace in care of Mr. Wayne Brechtel Esquire, citing the grounds for appeal due to factual error and findings not supported. As detailed in your hearing report for this project today, both the appellant's appeal issues are identified and city staff's responses to their issues are also provided. 
this week, a few recent corrections and clarifications were provided by the developer's design team and reviewed by city staff to include the layout of the companion unit parking as seen in uh, drawings L1 and A1 plan sheets is correct, but their coordination with the civil, their civil engineer's C2 sheet layout does not exactly match, but will be corrected prior to any final actions if approved today. In addition, the off-street companion parking area will be hardscaped pursuant to the municipal code with more pavers as allowed and defined in also the municipal code. Regarding the development's gross poor area, the new single dwelling unit, including front entry and roof deck, is calculated to be 4,034 square feet. The attached garage remains 462 square feet, along with a 701 square foot companion unit for the development total of 5,197 square feet. The floor area ratio remains at 40% and below the maximum uh, floor area ratio of 51% for the site. Should the project be approved, the noted corrections will be included in the final permit resolution and plan exhibits. Along with the recent clarifications, city staff evaluated the appeal issues and presented uh, issues presented and continues to support the approval of the proposed Cornberg residential development. Therefore, city staff recommends denial of the appeals on the basis of the information presented before you today, and you affirm the hearing officer's decision to approve the development permit. This concludes staff's presentation, and myself and the applicant, I believe, is online uh, to respond to any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll get into first clarification questions before we open up the public testimony. Um, I, I have a couple. Uh, one I just want to ask of the city attorney and staff, uh, and mainly more just to clarify for the public as well um, and put it on the record. But one of the, requ the request and appeal items was the fact that there was erroneous information uh, shown on the original public notice. And, and I just want a clarification is that there is no legal reason why this would have to be re-noticed. Am I correct about that? Uh, that, is, that is correct, um, Commissioner. Um, the notice was adequate and obviously the, the individual providing uh, that comment did receive notice and, and knows of, of this project and the process. Great, thank you. And my other clarification question is, uh, Mr. Daly, could you put up, uh, share your screen again and show the parking site plan that would show the parking? Sure. Let me slide, let's go to slide number eight. Perfect, yep, that's the one. Oh. Yeah, that one's great. Um, one of the things, and this is just for clarification, we can get into the discussion and the, the applicant can answer too, but is there a legal reason, code reason, why that parking cannot be located in the rear of the building? No, it's the option of the developer. Um, the code allows to have that parking in the front setback area, and this is where they have chosen to go ahead and provide the parking. Uh, I don't know what the other uses are for the other paved areas up here by the companion unit, but they have adequately shown the uh, two parking spaces were allowed for or required for the single dwelling unit, and then one parking space for the companion unit. Uh, but the I'm sure the applicant go ahead and uh, respond to the reasons why they decide to go ahead and put a place in the front. Okay, thanks for that. Um, any other clarification questions? You can leave it up there. Okay, and go ahead and stop sharing. Sorry, just because I can't see everybody. Uh, and any clarification questions? It looks like none, okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, with the appellant. Is the appellant here to, does he have a presentation or would like to say anything? I think we could start with Mr. Uh, Brechtel, please, first. Is he the appellant? Yes. Okay, great. Mr. Brechtel? 
Good morning, members of the commission. Um, <clears throat> my name is Wayne Brechtel. It's my pleasure to be representing Beth and Marshall Horowitz. Um, if possible, if I could uh, share the screen, if you will, so I can uh, put up my presentation as I go along. And Mr. Brechtel, you will have three minutes once you're, you, yep. we get the presentation up. Okay, we can see it. Three minutes as the appellant? Yes. Well, that's gonna be pretty tough. It's um, three minutes for the applicant, appellant, three minutes for everybody. Well, uh, just by way of background, very, and I'm gonna move a little quicker than I might have otherwise, but you know, the Horowitz own the home directly to the west of the applicant's property. And because of the unusual configuration of the Cornberg property, the parking space, and this appeal is focused on the uh, uh, companion unit parking spaces directly in front of the Horowitz property. So your, your job is to do two things. One, assess the facts and apply the facts to the law. And I say that because staff has correctly noted the rules, if you will, in its, in its response to the appeal, which is Parking is allowed in the front yard setback for companion units, end of story. Go home, that's all. However, that's not the end of the story <clears throat> because the facts in the ground do make a difference here. And, it, and I believe it's incumbent upon you to look at those facts in determining this appeal. Um, and I will just, uh, turning to the facts, look at this thing. The parking for the companion unit is next to the companion unit, uh, not in the front yard setback. And what you have in front of you here are plans that were submitted by the applicant to the C Homeowner Association, <clears throat> the association that both the Horowitz and Mr. Kornberg live within. They clearly show the true facts. There is a parking space next to the front door of the companion unit in the back of the property. The parking space for the guest parking, the parking space in the front is guest parking. Now, after February 2019, when these were presented to the, the homeowner association, the plans were changed. And uh, they didn't change physically. The labels were changed. The parking in the front now became labeled companion unit. The parking in the back was simply not labeled. So, the, so one of the questions you have to ask yourself, just, just looking at the rules, if the plans that were submitted to the Homeowner Association in 2019 were before you today. Would the parking space in the front yard setback be allowed? And the answer is no. The code does not allow guest parking in the front yard setback. The same rule should apply today. The code, it is still guest parking. You do not have to let common sense leave the room. There is a parking space for the companion unit next to the companion unit. This is going to be guest parking. And there's an attempt here to use a limited exception for companion units to get parking that is otherwise not allowed. Turning to the rules, and I'm, and I'm moving pretty quick here, and I just, uh, three minutes. The, the code does not permit parking in the front yard setback. It shall not be permitted except as otherwise allowed. The code for companion units says, Parking spaces may be located in any configuration with any setback areas. What the city code does not say is they have to be located in the front yard setback. And one of the things to keep in mind is the city code is really clear. The state and city codes only allow, and I'm moving through here because two minutes is not much time, one parking space for a companion unit. In other words, state law, the city code says you can have one space, you can only require one space. And you have to allow that to be in front yard setbacks. It doesn't say you have to. And in fact, it says as provided by the public agencies. So a couple of things here. One, if you accept the reality, which is look, there is a parking space for the companion unit outside of the front yard setback, then you have to ask yourself, is this exception so large for companion units that it consumes a rule? In other words, it's a magic wand. As long as you'd say it's companion unit parking, it gets to go there. Even if you have one 
space next to the unit, even if you have three spaces, four spaces. Mr. Brechtel, uh, you have reached three minutes. However, do you have anyone else online speaking on this who could yield time to you? I do not, and I wish I had known the three minute limit. I've never had an appeal with only three minutes or I wouldn't have done that, I apologize. But. Okay, what I'd like to do is um, I, I wanna give you, I got to treat everybody fairly, but uh, we can as a commission vote to allow you more time. Um, and if you could maybe stop sharing your screen for just a second, we'll just show by a show of hands if anyone would like to uh, allow him more time, just uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, um, we have, we'll, we'll give you, Mr. Brechtel, how much more time do you think you need? I'm hearing, I see a two there. I'll take two minutes if that's uh, the signal I got. Um, I, I was going to give you three, but. I'll ahead. take three. Yeah, no, I need three, but I, yeah. I, Go ahead, I'll give you three. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I will move it along. But, the, but if you look at the rules, if you look at them in context, you know, these ex companion unit rules are new. And as we all know, they came from the state down and the state wants companion units. They're making sure they can be permitted. They limit the number of spaces that can be required to one and they provide that you must provide flexibility to put it wherever it fits. I think fairly read, they weren't intended to say, oh, and you can actually put in more than one space and the applicant can de designate that I'm gonna put in two spaces, three spaces, anywhere they go. I mean, think about it. The city under state and local law cannot require more than one companion unit parking space. M cannot require more than one offsite companion unit parking space. It follows that they don't have any obligation to allow more than one on-site parking space for a companion unit. The, the planning commission has discretion to look at the facts. And look, the facts are easy. The parking for the companion is right next to the front door. It's not further away in the front yard setback. There's no, you know, the applicant hasn't misrepresented that. I mean, there is paving for the driveway that extends to the parking space in front of the companion unit. What's really going on here, and I understand why the applicant may be doing it, but it's, they know those plans in 2019 wouldn't be approved if they candidly said what that parking space is for. It's guest parking not a companion unit parking space. So the question you have to ask, are you required to accept that? Do you as a planning commission not have authority to look at the facts, make a determination of where the parking space for the companion unit is located and make a determination of whether or not that parking space in the front is in fact not for a companion unit. Or even more specifically, knowing that you can put a parking space next to the guest house, knowing there's one there, not allow a second companion, even if you accept it as a companion in the parking space, not allow a second space in the front yard setback. It's a question of the interpretation of the facts and code, but I submit when you put this all together, you can see what's going on here. We have a, a new set of rules that provide li a limited exception to a longstanding pro prohibition against parking in the front yard. And you have an applicant that literally just changed labels in an effort to gain more parking spaces that were intended or allowed under the code. It's not a meaningless impact here. This is a strange property, as you guys know from the maps. This parking space isn't in front of the Kornberg residence. It's going to be in front of the Horowitz residence, right in front of their bedroom. So I submit from a factual, from a legal, from a practical point of view, that parking space should not be allowed. There is a companion unit parking space next to the companion unit. Okay, that's a uh, total of six minutes, Mr. Brechtel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and if you could stop sharing your screen, uh, we will now go to the applicant. Is the applicant here for a presentation? And I will allow you the same amount of time, six minutes. Hey, uh, I was one of the other appellants I would like to speak. Uh, we're gonna hear the applicant first and then we'll go into regular the, the rest of the testimony. Uh, Commissioner, okay. Okay. Uh, Chairman Hoffman, the, we have one other person who is also in opposition, and that is the, Mr. Chen, who's uh, requested to speak, and that's the individual who's on the phone. Okay, okay, we'll let him go. Uh, is that the only other um, 
opposition person? Yes, okay. that is correct. Go ahead, now you have three minutes. Mr. Chen, please unmute your, your phone and so you can go ahead and start your presentation. It's star six. Is this not correct now? Yes. I did star six. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you Hello? are. Hello? Go. Oh, okay, I'm fine. Okay. Um, as a, also, a preamble, I'm going to speak on behalf of there are three co appellants, uh, all our neighbors, the species, Fauci's, and myself. So I would hope maybe a little more lenient, but a little bit more time. Come speak for three of us appellants. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop your time right now and explain. If they are on the phone and w ready to testify and are willing to yield their time to you, we can do that. But otherwise, you will have three minutes. Okay, well, I'll go quickly then. Okay. Uh, my name is Benny Chen, 2615 Ellington Road, a house adjacent to that house. I've lived there since 1975. And I'm asking you to deal with this in a sort of a different way than your normal mechanical method that the planning commission, I would like to encourage them to deal, deal with a bigger picture of how they do plan the community because our neighbor is very special and it was built for the faculty to bar, break the barriers against minorities. And we've always been a very special neighborhood and it was designed with a contour of the land to preserve the views and spacing and a low profile. That's why there are no roof decks in our neighborhood and the homes have been all modest except for one home uh, across the street which is built against our uh, approvals and this one here planning to be almost double the existing homes. Uh, we would encourage you to, to at least reduce the size somewhat. Uh, we didn't say no, they never said no, we were very realistic and the roof deck is one of the bigger problems because it's going to intrude. There are no roof decks on Ellentown Road. And Ellentown Road is quite well known because we are home to some of the great uh, faculty guys who started UCSD. And almost all of them have agreed that we're keeping no roof decks and low profile homes. Uh, I could go into length about the famous people, the prior, previous long term owner of that house, the Kornberg House, was Bruno Zim, who's very famous because he formed the Zim line system for X-ray crystallography, which is the basis of all our chemical research here at UCSD and the world, actually. Fred Spies, who's the family of the other appellant, designed a flip ship, the undersea water ship, that uses scripts to change oceanography. So we have a great family history. And uh, I mean, you may not like this, but when we first moved here, Bruno Zim and I allowed to organize Christmas caroling in our street, Allentown Road. I mean, this is the most unique street in La Jolla. There's no sidewalks, minimal traffic, and we used to Christmas carol each other's houses. Now we've had, unfortunately, some changes where people are willing to have the biggest house they can get, roof decks, and don't care about our neighbor character. But I think Planning Commission could take a new stride of view that you are city planners now. You can do more than just worry about size and concrete and how many bedrooms we have, but maybe plan for a community that everybody can really have a desirable lifestyle and live together. So I don't know if I can inflect you and change your attitudes about it, but I hope you think about the community planning in a bigger picture. And we do support uh, the Horowitz appeal as well, because having concrete and cars right in front of the street uh, really changes the neighborhood of Scripps Estates. Gotcha. And I will yield to anybody else. Thank you very, very much. Um, there's no other... Uh, speak people speaking on behalf of the appellant. So we will now go to the applicant. Is the applicant online? Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Christian Rice. I'm the project architect. Christian, before you start, um, let me tell you as the applicant, to be fair, you will have six minutes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to first address the uh, initial uh, comment regarding parking. Um, the design initially was to place the ADU parking spot adjacent to the ADU, but in speaking with the owner during the early stages of the project, we made a shift there uh, because the owner was really uh, desiring to plan for living in a house for many, many years. And we were uh, really not taking into account uh, accessibility issues potentially in the future. And so as you may know, the site is sloping from front to back. And that required the placement of the garage in a manner that actually has steps from the garage into the home. And the only area on the site that would provide a level path for accessibility is the parking adjacent to the ADU. 
So when we were taking that into consideration, we switched the design so that the companion unit parking was placed into the front. Um, so hopefully that addresses the reason for that switch. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to comment on any of the other issues if you have any additional questions. And I, I certainly thank you for your time today. Okay, I, I didn't quite get that. And just because you do have a little more time, could you answer that? Could you explain that one more time why uh, you can't park in the back? It's an ADA compliance issue? No, the, the owners obviously planning to live in this home for many, many years and thinking about future adaptability and accessibility issues. If the owner or his parents were to have to live in the house, uh, he wanted to plan for that and to provide a level path in case someone were in a wheelchair. And the only area that we could have a parking, uh, place the parking to provide that level path into the home would be in that rear location adjacent to the ADU. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other speakers? Sure. Uh, can you hear me? I'm, I'm the owner, uh, so I can elaborate. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much uh, for your time. So, yeah, I mean, the rationale for why we uh, yeah, had to make the change in the plans, it all relates to the topography of my land. There's some steep slopes. I mean, it's not common to have to have six steps to go from the floor of the garage into the pantry and the kitchen. It's also 14 steps to go from the street to the front door. So the only reasonably flat direct access point to the primary residence is from the area behind the ADU. That's our only option. And why is this necessary? And why has it become necessary? Um, personally, um, I've had intermittent issues with my back and anyone who suffered from back spasms knows you can't go downstairs you know, when your back uh, stiffens up. And there were a couple of weeks last year, I was in physical therapy for six weeks and there were definitely weeks when I would not, the only way I would be able to access my car uh, and leave my house would be to park behind the ADU and leave just from the kitchen. It's a very short walk if you look at the plans from the kitchen, which is the center of the house, uh, to that uh, parking behind the ADU. What's also important to consider is that um, I'm one of the few of the proud that was raised in San Diego, moved here just after I turned four years old, we didn't have any relatives in San Diego when we moved here. And so having lived here with the exception of uh, college and, and med school, um, we have what we call our family by choice, which are many tens of San Diegans who we've known for 46 years. And so this now includes people of all ages, whether it's children in strollers or elderly people in walkers, you need to have some sort of access that they can do. There are plenty of people who are just not able to climb stairs uh, or go downstairs. So, this is, again, is our only option in terms of being able to have a place for uh, you know, these friends, these family uh, to park with. My parents, thankfully, are still alive, but my dad is in his 80s. My mother will be entering her 80s. Uh, they need to be able to access my home. Uh, we're a close family. Um, I'm also active in the community, and I'd like to be able to host events. It's not going to be a party house, but you need to be able to have accessibility for people. And again, the only way to do that is from the area behind the ADU. Um, quickly addressing why this isn't going to impact my neighbor to such a great degree is because uh, Dr. Horwitz lives in Seattle and he almost is never here. It's, uh, the house has been empty for the majority of the time he's owned it. Um, I understand that there was, a, he did not like the idea of there being parking in close proximity to the bedroom window. And we addressed that. We had a hearing before the La Jolla Community Planning Association where I moved the parking so that was further away from the window. We're adding a fence and brush. So that'll be very much insulated from that. Um, the reason for the depth of the parking space is that even if you were to look at Dr. Horwitz's house from the street, you would not know that a car is even parked there. We really put uh, very careful attention uh, to, that, uh, to that issue because I want it to be aesthetically beautiful. Um, but it is my land and I also wanted some continuity with that part of my porch with the remainder of my porch. We have a 12 foot easement that goes to my neighbors behind me. So we have to have access for them. So we have to, and we only have two hour street parking. So we have to address all these issues in a way that is tangible and, and realistic. So, um, and then the other issue I wanted to raise, I read uh, Dr. Brecht, um, not Dr. Mr. Brechtel's report where he said that there are other places to park cars, but his calculations are just way off. He thinks that Two parking spaces can go in an 11 by 32 space, but a parking space is nine by 18 feet. And there's no way that two spaces could fit into that space. 
Furthermore, the area behind the garage or adjacent to the garage door is only 11 feet deep. You can't put two cars there and you can't parallel park there because of the easement and the sloping. I realize I'm speaking pretty quickly because of the time limit. If there's anything you want me to clarify, we've really thought through this very carefully and we're trying to do what's best. And this is the best option. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kornberg. Um, Commissioner, I have a comment about this. Commissioner, this uh, is Benny Chen. Uh, he, the, the, he's talking about the unable to walk upstairs. He's got a roof deck. Understood, thank you. Uh, please uh, don't break in until you're called here, but we're gonna go through the rest of the speakers. Uh, Tim, are there any other speakers on this? Sorry, Mr. Hector Ambro, do you wish to speak? Oh, I'm, I'm okay, thank you. And then there's an individual identified as Nate. I don't know if he's in opposition. He's, he's part of the architectural team. He doesn't need to speak. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I believe that is all the speakers. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will now open it up. Um, everyone, you've had your chance uh, to speak and we will ask you to, if there's questions, we'll ask you to speak up after that and we'll turn it over now to close the public testimony unless the commission has any questions. Um, and let's go to commission discussion and let's start with Commissioner Austin. Yeah, I, I actually do have a question. Um, there was a presentation made, uh, two presentations made, but I didn't really see much in the way of visual, um, the three-dimensional visual aspects in the presentation that would show um, what that elevation looks like, what the car might do to it. Um, I, I can understand it. I can understand from a plan standpoint, but I didn't know if there was something that staff had or the applicant had uh, maybe Mr. Rice had something that, that shows how you've mitigated um, the aesthetic issue that was brought up by the appellant. See, I believe on your lands, if you're talking about aesthetics and you're probably looking at landscaping, probably. I was just saying if there's something that could be brought up that was, you know, we, we do three-dimensional drawings, what have you, um, and I could go back and find it, but no, we do not have it. No, we you don't, don't have it. That that that's that's okay. I, I think I understand the basics. I'm gonna just make a couple of comments and then I want to listen uh, before I make any more. But um, you know, I I, I get it that um, this is an unusual piece of property and that car can have an impact on the feel and the view from the neighbor. However, uh, after hearing both sides, um, they both have compelling arguments. But I believe that Dr. Kornberg does have a right to this and his argument makes sense. Um, and so I'm at, at this point, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to what the neighbor is saying, but I do think there's a way to mitigate that. And uh, from a visual standpoint, uh, I'm going to stop there and listen to the fellow commissioners. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Boomhauer. Yeah, I have a question. Thank you. I have a question for uh, City Engineer Tony Khalil. Um, Mr. Khalil, I think the Dr. Kornberg, the the applicant, stated that there's two hour street parking, but can you confirm that there's on street parking in the right of way on Ellentown Road? Okay. Tony, you? Yes. All right. Thank you. I. I use my Surface Pro here, and then I have a big screen where I can see everything. Um, so I apologize if I'm looking back and forth. Uh, I, I don't know really uh, whether there's uh, on-street parking on Allentown. Uh, I don't know if Joe Stenko or any of the other staff can answer that question. Uh, I can uh, look into it and get back with you in the next few minutes. Uh, Mr. Daly, do you happen to know? Joseph uh, Stanko, senior planner, if you can unmute yourself. Um, yeah, Joseph Stanko, um, senior planner. I no, I'm not. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. 
Okay, can one of you look that up? Because that's kind of relevant to my thinking on this. Um, so I, I think I, I'm going to assume that the, the applicant is correct and that there is um, street parking, whether it's time limited or not, um, remains to be seen. But I got to be perfectly honest with you. I, I somewhat agree with Commissioner Austin. I, I hear both arguments that are being laid out here, but I'm very, very sensitive to the fact that Dr. Kornberg has a right to use his property within the limits of the regulations. And I would be very uncomfortable trying to restrict that. But further, and especially if there is public parking available on the street, I, I'm always going to favor an applicant who's providing on-site parking as opposed to parking in the right-of-way because the way I see it is the right-of-way shouldn't be overflow parking for homeowners it, it, if you can accommodate parking on the site. So I'm, I'm going to have a really hard time supporting this appeal, especially if there is on-street parking. Um, so once we know the answer to that, I'm I'm fully prepared to make a motion, um, but I'd like to hear that answer before we get there. So I will, Chair Hoffman, I will I will defer and let you keep moving through commission comment while we wait on that answer. Okay, and commissioners, if I can interrupt, this is Joseph Stanko. I I'm may I speak about the parking issue? Uh, Joe, real quickly, I just wanted to let Commissioner Boomhauer know. I I just quickly got onto Google Street Level. There's two hour parking between eight to six on the street. That was my answer too. That was, yep. all, all right. right. Perfect. Okay, so that being the case, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion um, to, uh, to go with staff's recommendation to deny the appeal and affirm the hearing officer decision to approve coastal development permit number 2255718. I'll second that. Okay. Okay, I heard, I'm just gonna go what I heard, uh, Vice Chairman Whalen took that second by a fraction there. Um, okay, let's uh, move on to Commissioner Granowitz. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly the Dr. Kornberg um, followed the, the rules and so we have the right to do what he's planning to do. Um, I had a problem with the exhibits I agree with Commissioner Austin. There was nothing we could look at, particularly to people who aren't architects, to be able to really visualize what, um, what we're looking at and what the issues were. And that could have been as easy as maybe taking some pictures and just marking them up. And that might have helped the case of the appellant. To the appellant, what I want to say is you do have a very special um, street, and I'm surprised that you haven't tried to do any kind of historic district for it, which would have really protected your street, but you guys didn't do that, and so change is coming. Um, you might still have enough um, original material there that you could still protect the street. I live in a historic district. I know it's difficult to do, but um, that's certainly something that you guys could pursue. Um, to the applicant, what might have been interesting as somebody who lives with multiple sclerosis and has two herniated discs is I find some of what you're saying specious because walking a couple of steps with a bad back is doable. And if it isn't doable, did you look at a ramp? Because ramps are another choice. And if you're only talking about six steps, that's not something that's horribly um, problematic to do. Certainly when you have 14 steps, getting what you need is more challenging. But there are certainly ways that people who work, who live in wheelchairs and use wheelchairs and walk with canes, we deal with all kinds of architectural impediments. And so while it might have been easier, did you look at putting in a ramp? Yes, it's something, are you able to hear me? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. It is something that we uh, that we considered uh, for the garage. The problem is that uh, if you were to look at the dimensions of the garage, I believe that we were told that it would be way too steep uh, to be able to do from the garage into the pantry. That's my understanding. Is that it's it's a pretty it'd be a pretty steep slope just given the configuration of the garage. And that's the only way into the house. From the garage, the only other way would be is again to allow uh, the area behind the ADU uh, to be parking for the primary residence, which is the idea. That's the rationale. It's the only really flat uh, approach that we have because of the way that my lot slopes toward the street as well as toward the west. Well, thank you. Um, it would have been nice to have had some um, visuals that actually um, showed that so it could be validated. I'll be supporting the motion. Um, anyways, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Moden. Um, I, I have one question. One of the opposers had mentioned roof decks and that no other homes in the area um, or on that street have them. Um, and, and I know Commissioner Granowitz, uh pointed out that this is not a historical district, but is there anything in the community plan that precludes roof decks? Um, I could answer that as well. The answer is no. There was in the, uh, I think roughly 70 years that this community has been in existence. There was a period of seven years where that was included in our architectural guidelines where they prohibited roof decks, but that was removed before I even moved into this community. Okay, um, thank you. Would, and then- I would, I would also note that in close proximity to me, there are three two-story houses in close proximity to my house as well. So when you're thinking about community character, it's important to have the full picture, which wasn't presented by the uh, person speaking the opposition. Sure. Um, I, I do wanna make a comment that I don't think it's really appropriate for us to look at past iterations of the drawings to try to find um, flaws or modifications to then meet the code. I think that sets a bad precedence. Um, things come up all the time when you're designing projects and you have to modify things constantly so you can make sure that you're within the code um, and you can get your project permitted. So I think that would be setting a bad precedence to look at an old set. Um, I don't have any other comments and I'm supportive of the motion. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Otsuji and Commissioner Otsuji, before you begin, I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot. Don't forget to unmute yourself, there you go. Um, is, I, I'd sure love to hear your comments uh, about the landscaping um, that for that parking space. Uh, and again, not to put you on the spot, but if you could. No problem. Um, and I, I, I like to emphasize the graphics also that Doug mentioned. Uh, uh, I think it would, it would have been very important if you had that because it would it would have basically sold the project in itself both from a architectural and landscape standpoint because you have a a, a very generous integrated uh, use of materials both architecturally and landscape and uh, I know Doug and I can interpolate it better than some other late people but uh, speaking of the landscape, uh, the planning palette that you have uh, uh, in your list is uh, very integrated and balanced with the intention, especially in the parking area. It does a very good job of screening and it is not a monotonous type of uh, landscape uh, selections uh, that demeans the site itself, but I think it enhances it. And that's why it's so important, graphically speaking, that you should have shown that. And I don't think you would have had any problem in regards to the project itself integrated with all the hardscape materials that you used here. So from the standpoint of, of the visual impact, when it's all said, done and matured, uh, it's gonna be very complementary to the architecture and landscape of what you have. So, you're not gonna even see the, the parking in question uh, from the street level uh, with the planning palette that you have. And it's very balanced both with trees, shrubs and ground cover. I won't go into the details of the type of materials, but it does 
do uh, the uh, purpose of basically screening that area and also uh, framing the, uh, the house itself. Thank you. So thank you, Commissioner Otsuji. Uh, Vice Chairman Whalen. Most of my comments have been made. Uh, I would mostly direct it to Mr. Rice, because I believe you've been in front of the Planning Commission before. These were not your best work in terms of renderings, and it would really have saved time and effort for us to see color, three-dimensional images that show what you're trying to do. Uh, and the other thing is I, I looked over the landscaping. It's a funny shaped lot. I'm, I'm fine with parking in front. It's allowed and uh, landscaping will screen it. So I'll support the motion. Stop there. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair Whalen. Uh, my comments uh, are pretty much similar to the rest of the commission. Uh, my strong preference would have been to put that parking in the back. That would have been my preference, but it, it is allowed. Uh, the applicant is conforming with the rules that we have in place, but based on uh, the testimony and especially appreciate Commissioner Otsuji's uh, commentary on that. I, I'm very comfortable that it will screen and that would be my biggest concern is just how that's gonna look from the street. So I, I can also support the motion. Um, is, is there any other comments from the Planning Commission? And if not, um, I'm going to go ahead. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Boomhauer, seconded by Vice Chair Whalen to um, basically, and I don't have the staff, let me get the staff report and get this right, uh, is to deny the appeal and affirm the hearing officer's decision to approve coastal development permit number 2255718. And if you could give your cast your vote as I call your name, Commissioner Austin. Aye. Commissioner Boomhauer. Aye. Commissioner Granowitz. Aye. Commissioner Moden. Aye. Commissioner Otsuji. Aye. Vice Chairman Whalen. Aye. And Chairman Hoffman is an aye. So that motion passes unanimously. And with that, um, staff interrupt me if I'm missing something, but that uh, concludes our meeting today. Yes, that happy was the last Thanksgiving. Item. Hold on. Oh, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Vicki. Everybody. Have a great holiday. And we are now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.